Welcome to the city, Mastermind City. Hi, I'm Faye Chapel, And I'm Stacey Maynard. Join us for a vibrant, inspiring, and uplifting master talk as we focus on how you can make a lasting impact on a global scale. Because the truth is, we're here because we want you to win. So are you ready to surround yourself with success because you're in the right place? Welcome to the city. So what's on your mind today, Stacey? Well, I had an interesting experience um, okay. yesterday. So it, it starts with a little bit of a story. Okay. And then I will um, jump in. So you may or may not know, but I'm turning 50 this year. Woohoo! So <laughs> in the beginning of January, started the ads of buy this shirt, buy this shirt, <laughs> buy this shirt, right? Like okay. it's you're 50 and fabulous, 1971, like pick your t-shirt. I was getting bombarded. Yeah. So I finally saw one that I actually liked and I have a good friend. We've known each other since we've been four. Birthdays are like three days apart. So I was like, I'll get one for her. I'll get one for me. Perfect. Ordered the shirt. Waited a million years. Right. Because that's what you do. (laughs) And And remember, I ordered two shirts. Okay. I received three shirts, none of which is what I ordered. (laughs) Oh my goodness. Where'd you order them from? I have no idea. Random company, right? Like you never right. know. So random internet, click, PayPal, buy. Yeah. Cross your fingers and hope for the best. And they're on the slow boat. Yeah. And they were on the slow boat to my house. So <laughs> they finally arrive and I get three shirts. So I ordered two black ones and I got three different colors, not oh. black. <laughs> <laughs> and three different sizes, none of which I ordered. (laughs) Wow. Crazy. So I'm sitting there and I'm like, okay, well, as we all know, we click on these companies. I wasn't even sure I was going to get a shirt. I figured I was donating my money to some hacker. Yeah. Who knows? But I'm like, I'll try. I'll send them a note. I'll see what happens. The odds of my message getting anywhere into the abyss, I'll just give it a shot. Well, guess what happened? They responded immediately. Wow. Like, they were like, can you send us a picture of what you received? I'm like, no problem. So I send them my pictures of three. She wrote me back. She goes, that's actually funny. <laughs> but you wouldn't get anything of what you like, not even close. Wow. <laughs> they responded back. They immediately took action. They immediately sent me um, my two shirts that I actually ordered. Yep. And then they said, it's going to cost us more yeah. to send it back to us. Then it would be, so she goes, I'm, I'm going to replace your order. Um, here's, here's your two shirts. So yesterday I received my two correct shirts. Wow. But I wrote them back again to say like, I have these three others. Do you want them back? Because yeah. I know skincare products and stuff like that are yeah. different, right? Like they can't take it back, but it's a yeah. clothing item. And they're like, nope, it's going to cost us more than what the shirts. Cool. Hey, so I had. So then I'm like, well, this is really cool. So I call my friend and go, well, here's a funny story because do you know anybody else who was born in 1971 that might want these shirts? Because I have these shirts I can give away. Yeah. But this conversation with her went down the road of customer service. Right. So my first thought was, how dare they make a mistake? Right. Like it was not how dare they, but like it was frustrating, right? Like you make a mistake. Seriously. Absolutely. However, mistakes happen. So in my opinion, and this is where um, I would like yours, is that okay? Where should they have, you know, should have been mad that they made the mistake? I didn't get mad. People make mistakes all the time. Restaurants, clothing stores, online orders, even Amazon, everyone makes mistakes, but it's how you fix the mistake that shows your true character. Right. So what did I do? I'm like, I'm literally on the phone with her. We're talking about customer service. We're talking about different companies because the challenge is she was telling me a story about how she tried to get a refund that she didn't even ask for. She just contacted the company to say that there was the problem. Right. They offered her a refund. They offered her a gift card that they ne- that she never received. So she will never, ever order from that company again. Of course. I'm on here going, holy crap. These guys were like, I was blown yeah. away by and how you order from them again. I'm now on their website trying to figure yeah. out what else I can order. Yeah. Because yeah. they fixed the mistake so quickly, easily. Yeah. They were, they communicated. I think that was the big, that was the big thing that, um, that came out of my experience was I knew what was going on every step of the way. 
Right. So it wasn't like my email went into an abyss and it wasn't like they all of a sudden they were like, okay, we'll fix it. and We'll let you know when you don't hear from them again. Like I got multiple emails of yeah. communication from them. And I'm like, and I would, I wow. would say that is the, um, that is the absolute example of leadership, right? Mm -hmm. That's leadership because it comes from the top. If, um, if you're in customer service and you're not told you can do that, then shame on the person who's in charge of the whole company, right? Because right. they should be saying customers first, right? Doesn't matter, make them happy. You know, when I was running um, businesses all over the world, I would always tell my people, if that customer gets to me, it's a problem. That means they had to come all the way to me because you know what happens when they come to me? I give them what they want, right? right. So it's, it's ridiculous. Just give them what they want when you um, end up on the call with them. And, you know, people are interesting because they'll say, well, you know, I'm not sure I trust if this is legit. Who cares? Like it's one out of like most people are honest. They truly are. Most people are honest. And when it comes to, you know, that it's just ridiculous. You know, I had, I had two things this week. One was, and this, it's interesting because it was totally the same thing. I had my washing machine broken. It's a whirlpool. And it's only a year and a half old. And I talked to my appliance guy and he goes, call Whirlpool. And I said, but it's out of warranty. Call Whirlpool because there's no parts because of COVID and all this stuff. And I called them and they said, you know what? It's out of warranty, but no problem. We'll look after it. And they had sent somebody for service the next day. So uh, they know. And I said, talk to them. And I said, you know, I'm, I'm shocked because it happened last time when I had an appliance with Whirlpool um, I said, so what is it that when I call Whirlpool, there's no issue? Because when I called Samsung, it was horrid um, for something else. And he said, you know what? We're told this is this week. So it's a great because we don't talk in advance. Right, Stacey? We don't yes. know what we're talking about. <laughs> so I said, it, he's like, it's um, it's what our policy is. If we can fix it for the customer, we fix it. So if you had called and this is true a couple of years back, my fridge was out of warranty. It was like two and a half years old. He goes, I'll sell you the extended warranty now and we'll cover it. Wow. So, so again, I said, that's outside the box thinking, but how crazy is it that we're living in a world where you're surprised so that totally. they actually helped you? And I'm surprised that I get an email back yeah. saying, we'll fix it. It's rare. And that's sad. It's like, this rare. Is sad. And I, I was so happy. Well, um, it, 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 it's very rare. And it's like some of the biggest companies, you know, I, I talked, I think I talked to one of our lives about I had a problem with Peloton because they were double billing me. Right. And I had to call, I call, I copied every director, CEO, I sent my note to LinkedIn, because they just wouldn't even stop billing me twice a month. Yeah. So and they admitted it that it was their fault. Right. And then on the thread that I got, they chastised the, the uh, customer service rep for telling me the truth that in fact it was their fault. She got in trouble, but right. they left but, it yeah, on the thread. But that's okay. You're allowed to admit, like <laughs> the girl on my email was like, we made a mistake. Exactly. We're sorry. I didn't, so I didn't say I want my money back or I want a refund or can't. I literally just sent them an email saying, I don't know what to do. I don't know how to help you help this situation get fixed. Exactly. Here's my situation. What can we do? Yeah. And then she came back with, and then we communicated and I sent her pictures. She thought it was funny. That's like, great. You know, what, she goes, we made a mistake and that's okay. You. And, and you own that. Absolutely. What's the company? Cause we'll give them a shout out. Do you know? I don't even know what the company is. <laughs> okay. Um, I'll Maybe find we'll it. I'll put, put it, it in on the, the comments uh, well. in our, in, under our YouTube channel. Um, because honestly, when people do a great job, just like I said, Whirlpool has always been so great for all their appliances. I like to give them a, a shout out because they deserve it, right? Absolutely. And but it also, again, it's the customer experience. So anybody who owns a business, that customer experience, to me, you get to know them a little bit better. Okay, you order something, you get it, blah. But yeah. it's the after sale service, especially if there's a mistake, you have a huge opportunity. And I remember um, dealing and, and helping companies with social media challenges, like somebody put a negative comment right. on a post, what should I do? And I'm like, <laughs> what should you do? This is a fantastic. This is great. And they're like, what are you talking about? Now you have an opportunity. Absolutely. You have an opportunity to showcase who you are, to have that integrity 
to be yep. able to go, yep, we made a mistake and here's how we're going to fix it. Yeah. And if you'll know, you always know if it's your mistake. Right? Absolutely. No, I look back, <laughs> like literally like made sure I ordered, thank goodness, like yeah. um, confirmation emails now come with the pictures. I'm like, okay, I did order this. I did order. I went on the site. I'm like, nope, this is what I ordered. <laughs> like just to make sure yeah. I didn't make a mistake before I contacted them. Exactly. Exactly. So, That's great. Well, like cool. I said, so for those of you who have really good cu uh, customer service stories, I uh, put it in our comments under our um, link under our um, YouTube channel, because if you have a good customer service story, give them a shout out. Or if you have a bad one, we don't mind that either, because you know what? People should be held accountable. Absolutely. So, um, Absolutely. So and great. if you're joining us in our community, uh, same thing, put it, put it in the comments. I love those stories. I love to hear about companies that have really, really good service or yeah. after service. Um, I hate to hear the stories where somebody's frustrated just because, you know, they didn't even make a mistake, but yet they're frustrated and they spend so much time trying to fix it. That's no. not fair. No. So. Okay. okay. So what's funny is, um, you know, I have, girl. <laughs> <laughs> you know, did you notice Stacy's always talking about something about business and then I talk about random weird stuff. So, <laughs> Perfect. so this, but what was funny is you started with the fact that you are, um, your 50th birthday and you know, that's what you're getting bombarded with. So what I found really interesting was um, a couple of um, couple of weeks ago, I guess the Gen. Um, what do we want to call them? Z or Z, depending on what country you're in, had a big, big deal um, in TikTok and in social media, and they said to the millennials, "You can always tell how old you are if you're wearing skinny jeans and side parts." Right? Did you hear about that? No. I was all over social media. So they laughed. <laughs> I've been sleeping, said, apparently. <laughs> they said anyone that's old has was still wearing skinny jeans and side parts. And people were like, ah, right? So could you know, did I change my hair today, Stacey? Yeah, I'm like, um... <laughs> <laughs> side part going. For those of you who can't see us, I have a side part going. Center part. I have a center part today, right? I, was, I, I thought you'd look different. Yeah, so I just get checked it out. But here's the thing. So the the uh, Gen Z, Gen Z, Gen Z. Um, they said, um, you know, they're they just laugh when they see anyone in skinny jeans and side parts, right? And some other things. And I was like, at first you're like, whoa, cause you know, what am I wearing normally, right? And then I started started thinking about it because- I'm very conscious of my side part all of a sudden. Right? <laughs> and if you, now if you look it up, you'll see it. There's a great article in the Wall Street Journal this week. For those of you who subscribe to Apple News and you get it all, it's in there, but it's skinny jeans and nine other styles that date you. <laughs> But here's the thing that I was thinking about. I never care. I always wear what I want to wear. I don't worry about stuff. But here's the thing. I was always a Levi's 501 button fly girl, straight leg boot cut. And, you know, I never, I hated skinny jeans, hated them with a passion. When my I'm going to give a shout out to the 501s after. I <laughs> love my 501s. <laughs> so, my daughter years ago said, you got to really, you know, you look good, put on some skinny jeans. And I, so I wore them because I felt uncomfortable because everyone else was, which was a bad thing to do. And I've always hated them. True. I've yeah. always, always yeah. hated them. I've never liked them. I always thought they were weird, but um, that's what I did. I took all my, my baggy boot cuts and straight legs and I cut them and made them into shorts. And I just, everything I wore was skinny jeans because that's what everyone wore. Right. And so, and I had a couple of pairs um, of pants left, but you know, never wore them. They're in the back of the closet. Right. So I read this article and um, I was like, okay, okay, let's l let me think about this. When I was young, I always parted my hair in the middle. Mm -hmm. And the only reason I went to a side part eventually was because I wanted to look when I was 20, like those older glamorous women that had their side part. And I wanted to look that part when I was in corporate. Right. And so, and then I so sort of really thought about it yesterday and I was like, well, hang on here. What is it that I like? So I, I got up to, you guys can't see them, but I put on my straight legs and I'm <laughs> so happy. I can't even tell you. I'm so happy. If I could, if we're in lockdown, if I could get out of it, I would go and buy my 501s again. I don't know if I can get button flies anymore. Do they well, still sell them? So funny because I went on a mission 
So I went on a mission earlier this year because I was in, um, I was in Halifax for a short time and I went on a mission because everything's open there, malls, everything. So I went on a mission. All I could find outside of the 501s were high rise skinny jeans. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, I'm in jean hell. (laughs) I am actually in jean hell because I don't like skinny jeans and I don't really like high rise. Yeah. So I go into the Levi's store and I say to the girl, I'm in jean hell. This is, I can't wear skinny jeans. I don't really like high rise help. And she said, have you like, have you seen the 501s recently? Yeah. And I'm like, like the old final, like Levi's 501s from like a million years ago. Always my favorite. And they are slightly high, but not really. They're normal. What I would consider sort of between mid and high. Yeah. So still stylish in today's world. But they were button fly, which I love. Yeah. And they weren't skinny jeans. No. They were straight. So the old standard of the 501s, I put them on and I'm like, oh, I literally wanted to bow down to Levi's. Yeah. Thank Fair. you for making a jean that's normal in my yeah. in my frame of not super high and right. not skinny. And they're hard to find. So yeah. big they're show very hard 501s. to find. <laughs> They're very hard. So I actually, it was interesting, even before this article came up last year, or not last year, maybe six months ago, I was like, going through and I was like, I really want button flies. I really want button flies. And I couldn't find them anywhere. And then this came and I it was kind of like, oh, it made me made me like rethink things. And when I put my jeans on today, I, for the first time, even uh, my daughter was upstairs, I was I was like happy. I'm like, I love how I feel. Just yeah, like, like a t-shirt and my regular jeans. And my hair is funny. So what do you guys think about the side part? I'm not, I don't worry about dating guys. I don't worry about being in style or fashion, but I, what I want to know is have you guys like, have you thought about why, you know, you haven't changed your hair in a while. Have you thought about, do you really like the look? And when I did it at first, I thought I'd hate it. Right. I was like, Oh, it's been so long. I thought I'd hate it. I just tried it out for this hot topics because I wanted to look the part of it. Th- well, it looks really good. Well, it's funny. Cause I, when I, when my daughter saw me and she looked at me, she goes, well, maybe you do look younger like that. I don't need to look younger. I just wanted the experiment. So I'm going to ask, so I'd like to ask you guys out there, have you read about this? Cause they have all these other things. It's very funny when you listen to the young, young, young guys tell you what's cool and what's not. So it was skinny jeans. It was side part. It's like, your socks, you know how you, everyone's wearing like the small sl- so- slip ons that go, you know, in your shoe. Now it's like you're, you're, you have to at least wear ankle socks that your socks show like all these like really weird little things. But it was very funny. If you guys look up um, any social media, TikToks or just punch in side part, you'll see all these people on, on YouTube and TikTok and everything changing their hair and saying, which one do you like better? So what do you think so it is? It's side part. So the Google search is side part and skinny jeans. Yeah. <laughs> and there's so, oh my goodness, it's gone crazy. Yeah. So, I mean, you've, you just heard Stacy and I, we actually like the old school jeans. That's where we felt most comfortable. The only shout out I give to skinny jeans at all is they're really easy to put when you're wearing boots. <laughs> yes. Bad, so funny. Jeans. So literally the first thing is attention millennials Gen Z or Z has spoken. Side parts and skinny jeans are officially dead. <laughs> that is the first thing on Google. <laughs> now there's a big thing now. There's a big fight coming back, you know, saying this is ridiculous. Side parts are great. We love my skinny jeans. But there was another article and this was one of the girls that was writing and saying, you know, as she walked down the street last week and caught her reflection in the, in, in one of the, store windows, she realized that she was, she felt out of date. She felt like, oh my God, I've had this style forever and maybe it's time to change something. So I'm not telling you guys to all go get baggy jeans. What I'm telling, what I, what I thought was really fascinating about it, it was not, I never felt compelled to to change anything, Mm -hmm. but what I, what I thought was fascinating was that you actually sat there and said, okay, I, like I just took it for granted that this is what I'm supposed to wear rather than like being true to what you really want to wear. Right. Well, and I, was, I think that's, you know, are you sort of that 
trend follower, meaning, right. you know, everyone else is, you know, all the stores have the skinny jeans and whatever. So I sort of went down the same road, went, I don't like skinny jeans. I don't <laughs> like them. I don't look good in them. I don't feel yeah. comfortable in them. They're comfortable, yeah. Yeah. but I don't like them. So yeah. I went on a mission and it was fascinating how difficult, um, yeah. unfortunately, it was. But if you search long enough, you can find. And she literally, this girl in the store, had to go to the bottom yeah. of the pile. But they do exist. So but now I would say, I would argue that now you will see in the next six months when the stores, at least here, when they reopen, they're already open everywhere else. You will see straight legs, yeah. boot cuts, flares, because now, you know, the, the generation has spoken. Okay. Right? The one that, the one that spend all the money and the parents buy them anything they want and they will push their parents into making sure they're wearing, you know, like cool. mom jeans are now cool, believe it or not. Right. Um, so so yeah. it's, it's fascinating. And I was, it was, um, I was listening as I was driving yesterday, I always listen to Sirius XM and I listen to a lot, a lot of the entertainment. That's why I always get all these weird topics <laughs> and this wasn't on there, but they were interviewing George Lopez, who's a comedian and um, just talking about stuff. And he said what uh, paraphrasing, but he basically said what um, what's, interesting to him right now is that, you know, people are trying to be like other people, right? Like you're always like trying to fit in and ju just like, yeah. just like for, you know, when they're saying skinny jeans are dead. I mean, if you're following that trend, then you're just trying to be like everyone else. And he said he misses the days back in, you know, seventies and eighties when people just wore, they were quirky and they wore what they liked as opposed to what they thought they should. Right. Right. What so I guess my, my thing to everyone who's watching us today is, you know, uh, take a step back today and say, what do I really like? What do I miss that I used to wear? Or, you know, did I, I never worried about it. You know what I mean? Like I yeah. always, I never, I used to put on my 501 button flies and a black or white t-shirt. That's all I ever did. Still yeah. always, obviously still wear the black, but I didn't think about it. And that was, um, and that's easier to do when you're not wearing skinny jeans, I think. Yes. Well, I have to say, um, thank you to whoever said that skinny jeans should die and need to go away because I have hated the trend for many years. I go into the stores, everyone's like, the skinny jean, they're stretchy skinny, they're this. And I, every single solitary retail person, I would go, I hate. And yeah. they're like, that sucks because that's everything right now. So yeah. it is. So yes, you do have to look maybe a little bit outside the box because yeah. the typical maybe stores that you go to, but with the online world opening, especially with amazing customer service and companies out there, try, yeah. uh, try something that maybe you haven't ordered from before and you will yeah. be able to find what you like. And I challenge people to go, you know, into their closet and, and see what's in there. Like what made you happy that you wore? Who cares if somebody says it's not in style anymore? Who cares? Wear it because it makes you happy. Because if you feel happy, everything in your life, including your business, is going to be better. Thanks for joining us here in Mastermind City, but you don't have to say goodbye because there's other ways to join us. We would love to have you as part of our community. So join us in mastermindcitycommunity.com so we can hang out together.